In science fiction stories, humans have colonized planets and galaxies all around the star system. However, this is not easy to achieve in real life, given the current technology and the distance between us and the nearest orbital bodies. Despite this, with Elon Musk preparing for the first orbital of Starship, we are getting closer to space exploration milestones. If successful, this will be another historical moment in space exploration. The SpaceX team is not stopping there, as the tech billionaire has recently leaked a new rocket engine that will get us to Mars in as fast as 39 days. Make sure to subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon to stay informed about the latest space news and updates. NASA estimates that even the journey to Mars, our nearest neighbor, is expected to take seven months. This is why science fiction authors often design strong propulsion systems for their spacecraft which enable people to travel great distances in days or minutes instead of months or years. Due to the limits of conventional rocketry, these typical flight times are necessary, but cutting-edge technology that seems like it belongs in a science fiction movie is now emerging and could eventually replace traditional rockets entirely. These month-long flying periods might be reduced to a matter of days thanks to the increased efficiency of ionized engines. There are several examples of this technology being used in space missions right now, even if the technology is still in development. Rocket fuel is burned in conventional chemical rockets to produce thrust. In contrast, ion engines provide their propellant with electrical thrust, producing ions or charged particles that are subsequently driven through electromagnetic fields, occasionally reaching speeds of 146,000 km per hour. The more electricity you have, the more momentum you can give to the particles, resulting in more speed for your rocket. NASA space shuttles can travel at a top speed of 29,000 km per hour. Ion thrusters are capable of traveling at 11 times that speed. So why haven't we already started using ion engines if they are so superior? They have been put to use by us in case conventional thrusters failed. For example, the recent NASA DART mission was outfitted with a next gridded ion thruster. Ion thrusters have proven to be an excellent tool for long-distance missions and moving small objects such as tiny satellites. They are particularly useful for sustaining orbits with a minimal amount of force. However, before they can become a viable option for human transportation, several issues need to be addressed. Ion engines rely on the delicate balance of networks of moving electrons that produce magnetic and electrical forces. This balance can easily be disturbed by ions from the atmosphere, which can cause the engine to malfunction and lose its ability to produce the proper fields needed for constant acceleration. Moreover, the cost and availability of the finest fuel source for ion engines, chemically inert xenon, is a significant obstacle. At $1,000 per kilogram, it is prohibitively expensive and difficult to obtain. To replace rockets as the main means of space travel in the future, these issues must be resolved. Fortunately, various initiatives are underway to fulfill that goal. The European Space Agency and the Australian National University are working together to develop a new type of ion thruster, the Helicon thruster, which is expected to overcome some of these obstacles. The Variable Specific Impulse Magnetoplasma Rocket, or VASIMR, is another promising development. It is more powerful than other ion thrusters and can run on nearly any fuel source, though it prefers argon, which is much more affordable than xenon. With these advances, space travel to distant planets such as Mars could become a reality. The VASIMR, for instance, could transport astronauts to Mars in just 39 days, a significant improvement over current methods. While ion thrusters are a promising new class of propulsion, they are not yet capable of replacing traditional rockets completely, as they have weak thrust. However, even if an ion engine is never created with the thrust required to escape a planet's gravity well, it still has the potential to significantly reduce the time needed to reach far-off worlds. Despite the technological challenges, ion thrusters are currently being used in the satellite transportation industry as an effective mode of movement, and research is ongoing to resolve the problems associated with short-burn, high-thrust missions. The recent NASA nuclear rocket plan aims to get to Mars in just 45 days, using a nuclear thermal and nuclear electric propulsion system. This technology has been extensively studied and tested, and NASA has restarted its nuclear program to create a bimodal nuclear propulsion system, which comprises an NTP and NEP element. This system has the potential to transport humans to Mars in only 100 days. A wave rotor topping cycle is being used to develop this new form of bimodal nuclear propulsion, 
which could potentially cut the time it takes to travel to Mars to just 45 days. Professor Ryan Gossi, the hypersonics program area head of the University of Florida and a member of the Florida Applied Research and Engineering Team, proposed this idea under the title by model NTP-NEP with a wave rotor topping cycle, which was selected by the NASA Innovative Advanced Concepts Program for Phase 1 development in 2023. The fundamentals of nuclear propulsion are based on two principles, each of which has undergone extensive testing and verification. Nuclear reactors are used in nuclear thermal propulsion to heat liquid hydrogen propellant into ionized hydrogen gas, which is then sent through nozzles to produce thrust. This propulsion system has been built and tested in a number of attempts, including Project Rover, a joint venture between the U.S. Air Force and the Atomic Energy Commission that was initiated in 1955. The program began a new phase devoted to space flight applications in 1959, and a solid-core nuclear reactor called the Nuclear Engine for Rocket Vehicle Application, or NERVA, was successfully created and tested. The program was terminated before conducting any flight testing due to substantial funding cuts when the Apollo age ended in 1973. On the other hand, nuclear electric propulsion uses a nuclear reactor to supply electricity to an ion engine known as a Hall Effect Thruster which uses an electromagnetic field to accelerate and ionize an inert gas to produce thrust. NASA's Nuclear Systems Initiative Project, Prometheus, is one effort to create this technology. While both methods outperform traditional chemical propulsion, they have modest thrust levels compared to traditional rockets and NTP. Nonetheless, NEP ideas are notable for providing more than 10,000 seconds of ISP, meaning they can maintain thrust for about three hours. While NTP and ERVA designs are the preferred propulsion method for crew trips to Mars and beyond, they face difficulties in supplying appropriate initial and terminal mass fractions for high Delta V missions. Therefore, by model concepts that integrate the benefits of both propulsion technologies are preferred. Under Agassi's plan, a bimodal design based on a solid cord NERVA reactor would be used to produce a specific impulse of 900 seconds, twice as powerful as chemical rockets. Gossi suggests incorporating a pressure wave supercharger, or wave rotor, into the cycle. This device compresses intake air by using pressure waves generated by reactions, and when coupled with an NTP engine, generates thrust levels similar to those of a NERVA class NTP concept. There are suggestions for new reactor designs that not only provide propulsion but also offer a consistent power source for lengthy surface missions where solar and wind power may not be available. Examples include the hybrid fission fusion reactor chosen for Phase One development by NASA's NEIC 2023 selection and the Kilo Power Reactor utilizing Stirling technology. Thanks to these and other nuclear applications, crew journeys to Mars and other planets in deep space may be possible in the future. That ends today's video. Please share your thoughts in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Thank you for watching.